Hi guys, uh, welcome. My name is Bridget and I have put together a little mini activity lesson um, that you can do with your family, with your kids um, during the summer, just to kind of keep them engaged, keep their brains going. Um, so the story that my lesson is based off of is the Fighting Infantry Men, and it's the story of Albert D.J. Cashier, transgender Civil War soldier. And the what the book talks about is is about Albert and during his time, um, during his uh, while he um, during his life, what he did, and that he was a soldier in the Civil War. Um, and but he wasn't always Albert and so um, it talks about his journey um, as Janine and what her life looked what his life looked like before he became Albert um, and so just kind of some challenges that he went through and um, some of the positives that he had. So I'm going to go ahead and read you a couple of parts from this story. So let's got my little uh, tabs here. Okay. Janine Hodgers collected seashells along the windy shores of Cloggerhead County, Loth, Ireland. She tended sheep in the fields. The work was easier in boys' clothes. Some time later, she and her stepfather sailed to America as stowaways. Janine dressed as a boy. It was more practical and safer that way. When the two of them arrived in New York City, they needed money. Janine found work in a shoe factory. It was a job for a boy. Janine fit right in. The winds of history blew through America. The winds of change were whirling around Janine Hodgers too. Janine moved west. By the time she arrived in Belverde, Illinois, she started working as a farmhand. Janine had a new name and a new identity, Albert DJ Cashier. Albert found himself in a country torn apart. The United States was at war with itself. By 1861, Southern states succeeded from the Union. The Civil War, the war between the United States of America and the Confederate States had begun. Had began, begun, my apologies. The wind of war raged through the country. In the summer of, 19, of 1862, President Abraham Lincoln called for more volunteers to fight. Hundreds of thousands of volunteers. On August 6th, 1862, like most other men in Boone County, Illinois, Albert was ready to enlist in the Union Army. He was 19 years old. It wouldn't be easy, it wouldn't be safe, but Albert had made a choice. He answered questions in his thick Irish brogue. He signed his name with an X, but there was more to enlisting than signing your name. Each volunteer had to pass a physical examination. Albert was five feet, three inches tall. Maybe his height wouldn't matter. He was one of the smallest volunteers. Maybe his size wouldn't matter. He was strong and healthy. And maybe, just maybe, that's all that would matter. Okay. So that kind of describes Albert and why he decided to become Albert um, and not continue as Janine. As we continue in part of the story, on May 5th, 1911, as Albert's health worsened, he was admitted to the Illinois Soldiers and Soldiers and Sailors Home. The doctors and nurses there also learned that Albert wasn't born a man. Albert begged them not to tell anyone. They agreed, at least for a while. But all too soon, someone spoke to a reporter. Then another reporter heard the news, and another, and another. 
Soon, newspapers in Albertstown, his state, and through the country shouted. Albert had no idea the story of his life had become big news. No one told him. Newspapers were hiding from him. The news was kept a secret. When the United States government caught wind of the story, they started asking questions. Who is this person? Why is a woman receiving a, receiving a military pension? Could this possibly be the same person who, sit, who served in the Civil War? Men from Company G visited the hospital. They saw the old man in the faded blue uniform. They talked to him. Soon, they were talking to doctors, reporters, and government officials. This is Albert D. Cashier, they said. Albert's health grew worse. In 1913, he was sent to a different hospital, and the doctors there saw things differently. To them, Albert was a woman. It didn't matter that he had served in the Civil War. It didn't matter that he had lived his life as a man. Albert sent the, was sent to the woman's section of the hospital. He was required to wear skirts and dresses. He, was, he wasn't given a choice. Albert had no idea that his army comrades were fighting a new battle, a battle for him. They testified on his behalf. They wrote letters. They fought for Albert to be treated with respect and to receive his pension. Then, on February 10th, 1915, the army de declared, the evidence in this case shows beyond any doubt that the prisoner, that the pen pensioner is the person who rendered the service. Identity may be accepted. Finally, Albert and his, sol and his soldier comrades could breathe easy. They could relax. The government agreed Albert was who he said he was. Eight months later, on October 10th, 1915, at the age of 72, Albert passed away. Albert's fellow soldiers made sure the story of Albert DJ Cashier did not blow away with the winds of history. His service to his country would not be a secret. The men of the 95th Illinois Infantry ins insisted that Albert be given a military funeral. Just like every other man who'd served in the Union Army, Albert's body was dressed in his blue uniform with shiny gold buttons. The American flag was draped over his coffin. Nurses from the hospital sang. Albert was buried in the Sunny Slope Cemetery of Sanamon, Illinois. His tombstone was inscribed, Albert D. K Albert D. J. Cashier, C.O.G. 95th Illinois Infantry, 1843 to 1915. Life had not been easy for Albert. Life had not been, life had not always been safe, but the proud Civil War veteran lived life the best way he could. It was more than a choice. It was who Albert D.J. Cashier was. So those are just little bits and pieces of, um, of Albert and the fighting infantrymen. And what stood out to me was the fact that it's important to make sure that you are comfortable with who you are. And so um, the little activity that I put together, it's very simple. Um, you can talk to your kids and let them know like, they're beautiful, they're smart, they're whoever they want to be. Um, and so, and it's important to make sure that they have that good self-confidence because um, it makes them confident in who they are. It makes them stand taller. It makes them stand prouder. So um, it's really simple. All you need is a piece of paper and some colored pencils, um, crayons, markers, um, whatever. And what I did is I just drew a picture of how I see myself um, as a beautiful young lady. And then around it, I just wrote words that describe who I am, um, that I'm loved, that I'm a friend, that I'm smart, um, I'm beautiful, I'm a hard worker. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a good way to have those conversations with your kids because they're not easy conversations, not at all. But it's, it's very important as they get older that they, um, 
that they know who they're who they are that they're comfortable um, talking about who they are and um, having those conversations with you and that you have those conversations with them always supporting them and um, in whatever they uh, want to achieve so I hope you all have a fun time doing this activity I really enjoyed um, this book because I never thought you know when you learn about the Civil War you learn about all the all the men that that fought in it and you, you never hear their stories about who they actually are and so um so have those conversations with your kids um allow them to show who they are be confident in who they are um to stand tall to stand proud of themselves so I hope you all have fun with the lesson and yeah.